So research is actually one of the most untalked about things that is essentially required if you want to get into med school here in Canada. Yes, it's great to have a high GPA and have various extracurriculars, but if you don't have research, you essentially put yourself at a disadvantage versus other applicants. Now, I'm sure you guys already know getting into medical school anywhere is very, very hard. And if you live in Canada, just like I do, getting into medicine is even harder. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how I was actually able to get research and how you guys can actually also get research over the summer and throughout the year which will actually make you a more competitive applicant now for those of you that are new my name is Mikey and I'm a science pre-med student here in Canada hoping to get into med school here in Canada as well if they don't reject me like they reject everyone else Now this video will be split up into three different sections. The first section will be how I got research and the current research that I currently have been doing and the position that I'm currently in. The second section of the video will be the different forms of research that you could actually do because there's various different ways that you can get involved in research. And the final section of this research will be exactly how you can apply for research and what you need to do in order to get a great research position here in Canada or in anywhere in the world. Now before we get started with the video, don't forget to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button because because it does help me out so much. And if you're not interested, feel free to smash the like button and subscribe button anyways. Now I've been in research now for about three years working in St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto in the gastroenterology department. Now my job is essentially I help out with anything that the head of researchers do. So there are doctors also on the team and anything they essentially need help with, anything that the research assistant needs help with, I'm essentially there to help them out. So the first year that I actually got involved with research, we essentially organized a trial where we helped medical residents in general surgery in the University of Toronto, as well as medical residents in gastroenterology in the University University of Toronto and we wanted to see whether augmented reality will help them actually perform better on colonoscopy procedures. Now this is just one project that I worked on. I've worked on other things as well like organizing schedules for these residents as well as you know proofreading papers, doing literature reviews through papers. Basically I've worked on a bunch of small tasks with this team and I've been with them for three years working on various things all around. Now the main reason why I wanted to get into gastroenterology research is because I'm very interested with the profession. Now I personally want to be a gastroenterologist just when I wake up when I wake up <laughs> now I personally want to be a gastroenterologist when I grow up after I finish medical school so I knew that getting my feet wet with gastroenterology research right now will help me be more competitive for residency positions once I'm actually in medical school so not only will this research help me get into a competitive specialty later on it will also help me get into medicine because as you guys know medicine is only getting more and more competitive the stats to get into the University of Toronto which is one of the best medical schools in Canada is around six and a half percent acceptance rate they take around 250 59 people if I'm not mistaken and every year they have around 3,900 applicants which is an absurd number their average GPA of acceptance is a 3.95 so although that's good not everybody with a 3.95 or above or even anything above a 3.9 will get into medical school I have a lot of friends with high 3.9s like a 3.99 and even a 4.0 that applied this year and last year and didn't get in and one factor could be research assuming that their extracurriculars are already really great now research is really really great because it helps you stand out from the other applicants. Medical schools want to know that the students are going to come into the school, are going to perform research and are going to, you know, help expand the medical field. So if you're already getting your feet wet with research right now, they have a higher chance of accepting you because they know that you're going to continue to do that while you're actually in medical school. Now let's talk about the different forms of research that you could actually get into. There isn't only one type of research. Now research is essentially split up into two different categories. You have wet lab and you have dry lab. Now wet lab is semi self-explanatory. This is essentially what you would do in a biology lab, in a chemistry lab where you're mixing a lot of reactions or you're working hands on. These are the type of labs where you end up putting on goggles because you know there's flammable material or you're working with tissue culture. There's essentially various different categories that fall under wet lab. So think of it where anytime you go into a lab and you have to wear goggles or you have to wear a lab coat, that is essentially wet lab. Now a dry lab lab is essentially when you're working with a computer or you're doing advanced computational analysis. So let's say, for example, you're reading a bunch of articles and you're creating a literature review or you're doing a meta analysis or a systematic review. Essentially, anything that you're not working with chemicals or any flammable material at all, that is technically considered dry lab. Now, I personally was basically most of my time in a dry lab. I have performed wet lab procedures, you know, before I was in St. Michael's Hospital. But the majority of my research career, I guess you could say I was in a dry lab. Now, which one should you guys actually get involved in? And that essentially comes to what you want to do in your future 
career or in your future in general. So let's say you wanted to get into a master's program, into a specific graduate study, then maybe a wet lab would be beneficial for you because it'll help you create a great thesis for that master's and help you already set you up for you know that thesis and the master's program. Or maybe you wanna get more involved in meta-analyses, literature review, things like that that is produced a lot in medicine, then maybe a dry lab would help a lot. I personally found that the dry lab that I'm in right now with gastroenterology, that'll actually help me facilitate my future career in medicine. So that's why I personally wanted to apply to it. Now you all seem to make sure that whatever research you're applying to, whatever research you wanna get into, is one that interests you. Usually if you do wanna get published, which would actually help even more in your medical school application or in your graduate school application at all, if you are published, that makes you way more competitive to people that are involved in research and that are not published. But medical schools, as well as graduate schools, understand that it's very, very hard to get published, especially if you are still an undergrad. So by getting involved with a specific research that you like, you have a higher chance of getting published because you're gonna wanna put more work into it. And so now let's get into the nitty gritty stuff and how to actually get involved with the research team. And the way that I actually got involved, like I said earlier, was by sending basically cold emails to a bunch of researchers. But I don't just mean cold emails where it's, you know, random emails just sent to random people. No, it's cold emails that are actually organized and structured for the specific researcher. A lot of times online and in different places it says send cold emails, but it doesn't always say exactly how to send a good cold email so that whoever is reading it actually see that you're interested in their research. So I applied to over 400 different positions and I heard back from around 35 of them, which is actually a high number. If you ask around with anybody that you know has research, they'll probably tell you that they hear back from one, two, three, or maybe even four, but no one ever hears back from a lot of people. Some of the teams that I actually heard back from and actually got a position for were paid, but although they were paid, I knew they weren't gonna help facilitate my future career in medicine. Like maybe they were in cardio and I personally wanted gastroenterology. So I was trying to get the best position I could find and the position that I actually found was a volunteering, was not paid, but it would help me actually be competitive later on if I wanted to get into gastroenterology. So the first thing I wanna do is actually find the emails of the researchers, professors, or doctors that you wanna to apply to. And this is very, very simple. Usually how you can do this is by searching up the hospital or the university and searching up the faculty or the specific specialty that you want. So in my case, I searched up St. Michael's Hospital Gastroenterology Division, and then I found a bunch of different researchers there, and that's how I kinda of sent out my emails. Now, I didn't only do this for St. Michael's Hospital. I did it for Sick Kids, Mount Sinai, McMaster Hospital, even hospitals in Mississauga, hospitals all over the place, you know, in Ottawa, McMaster, many different universities here in Ontario, because I wanted to maximize the chances that I have of actually getting a position. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna include in your email is an introduction to yourself. So you're gonna say, dear doctor, you know, let's say, dear Dr. Atala, my name is Michael Atala, and I'm a Bachelor of Science student here at the University of Waterloo. Very, very simple, to the point, it helps the researcher, the professor, the doctor, know what position you're in, and it's just a very great way to start off the conversation. Now, the second part of your email is essentially where you say that you've done your research on their own research and you think it's gonna help you out a lot. So you're gonna say, I was very intrigued when viewing your research on yada, yada, yada. So let's say gastroenterology. When I was viewing your research on augmented reality and how that's actually gonna help general surgery and gastroenterology residents in actually performing better in colonoscopy procedures. And I wish to be involved in your research in any way that I can because I think that it'll help consolidate my future career in medicine. So this is essentially showing that you did your research. A lot of cold emails people send shows that people didn't do the research. The professor will see it and be like, you know, I don't want this person because they clearly don't understand what's happening in my lab. But if you show them that you did your own research, you found out exactly what they're doing, and you're interested in the current project that they're working on, there's a higher chance that they're actually gonna take you onto their team. Then you're gonna talk about the experience you have. So you're gonna say, in the past, I have completed research in ba 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 blue. So in my case, I did re previous research wet lab in actually Harvard University, and I think that helped me get the position. However, a lot of people don't have past research experience, but you might have lab experience. So you might have chemistry lab experience, you might have biology lab experience, or you might even have a statistics course under your belt, which is actually very useful for writing systematic literature and meta-analysis reviews. So in the past, you could say, I've completed a chemistry lab or a biology lab, which would actually help a lot if you're applying to a wet lab. Or you could say that I completed a statistics course, you know, a higher level statistics course that'll help out with dry lab stuff. Very simple. Obviously, if you have more experience, this would help out a lot. But if you don't, you could definitely find experience that you have. And honestly, writing anything would be beneficial 
initial at this part of the email. Now, the final section of this email is your background information. And that's essentially where you're gonna attach your transcript and your CV. Now, you wanna make sure that the CV you're gonna put is as small and concise as possible because no professor or doctor has any time to read a four or five page CV. Put the research experience that you have, then put the volunteer experience that might be beneficial, your background information for education, as well as any other information you have, and only literally just put the title, like literally put volunteered in this executive position in this simple as that that's essentially all you really have to put into it it should be one or two pages maximum and then finally close off the email and say if you have any questions for me i would be happy to answer any questions that you might have because i'm very interested in getting involved in your research so it's very short and sweet and it just shows the researcher that you're actually intrigued in the research and you want to get involved with them and of course also put like thanks michael atala thanks whatever like john doe it doesn't matter just as long as you like end off that signature that's pretty much all that matters now that essentially sums up the video and that's essentially how i found research now this didn't come naturally to me people taught me and i'm really just trying to show other people how to get it because I know med school in order to get in is very very competitive nowadays so I hope you guys did enjoy if you did enjoy the video subscribe and like down below because it does help me out so much and it does help show this content to way more people thank you guys so much for watching take care and take it easy